Hello everyone, this is Josh Bastine, Instructional Technology Coordinator for Gallatin County School District, here to talk for just a few minutes about how to migrate from Outlook to Gmail and Calendar. Now we're going to be migrating in just a few weeks. In fact, by the time you're viewing this, we probably will have already migrated over. So we're just going to talk for just a few minutes about how you can get the most out of both of these applications. Um, so we're going to start with Gmail. Now most of you are probably somewhat familiar with Gmail already simply because it's the most popular email software out there right now. Um, but we're going to give you a little bit of an overview and kind of go a little bit more in depth on how you can make your life a lot easier. So even those of you who are pretty familiar with Gmail will learn some few things simply because there's so much to Gmail. So just a quick overview, Gmail is cloud-based. What that means is that all of your emails are not stored on your computer, they are stored in the cloud. Now the easiest way to think about the cloud is basically a flash drive in the sky where you can download your um, email, you can access your email from any device, from your phone, from a tablet, from a computer, from anywhere because they're not stored on that device, they're stored in the cloud. It integrates with other apps such as Calendar, uh, what that means is that in order, like for, for example, let's say you get an email from American Airlines saying you've got a flight coming up, and it'll give you your flight number and the times that it leaves, so on and so forth. Um, you can just click a couple buttons, and Gmail will automatically put all that information into your Google Calendar so that you don't have to do it manually. It just saves you a little bit of time. It's very customizable. You can set up rules and filters and all kinds of different things with Gmail. It's searchable. Google is best known for being a web search engine. They've got pr probably the most advanced search algorithm out there. And what this allows you to do is to quickly and easily search through all of your email to find what you're looking for. It can be a title. It can be a, the whoever sent it to you. It can simply be a word or a phrase from within the body of an email. Google will find it. Gmail also has excellent security. Their security is pretty pretty top notch. It'll, you'll should see a reduction in spam, a reduction in phishing. You should see pretty much no viruses coming through. It's just very 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 good security. So now let's talk about how to log into Gmail. One of the problems we see a lot of times is people are logged into multiple Google accounts. They'll be logged into their personal Google account, then they'll have their work Google account. Some people like myself have six or seven Gmail accounts because every time every school I've ever gone to has given me a Gmail account. Plus I have my personal one, my wife has one, and I've got one for our for our entire family for pictures. I've got one for as from Coker, both as a student and as a professor. I've got one from Ole Miss. I've got one from USC. I've got one from all these different places. Um, so it's easy to kind of accidentally log into three or four of them at a time. And the problem with that is that when you're logged in, it'll, it'll your Gmail will only show up for the first one that you logged in as. And in order to see the rest, you have to kind of toggle through, and it's annoying. So what we suggest you do is to log out of all of them and log back in with only your Darlington County one. If you also want your personal one, we'll talk about a little bit later about some plugins and things that you can do to be able to easily and quickly check multiple Gmail accounts, but it's easiest just to stick with one. So to do that, log out of all of them and then log into your GAFE, which is your first.last at darlington.k12.sc.us. Then you're going to do one of these things, and I'll walk you through real quickly how to do these. You go to mail.google.com. You can go to gmail.com. You can click on the mail link, which I'll show you in a second, or you can click on the waffle icon. Now I am logged in here with my Darlington County account. If you'll notice, I'm also logged in with one of my personal accounts. So I've got two accounts here. So I can click on, to get to Gmail, I can click on the mail link right there. It'll take me over to my Gmail. Now we don't have anything in here yet because we haven't turned on receiving messages from for our Gmail accounts. But that's how you get there. And you'll notice, if you go to yours, yours will look a little bit different than mine because I have a few labs and plugins and whatnot installed that change that alter the look of it. That's the whole custom, customization thing. And we can talk, we'll talk about later about how you can do that if you want. You're not required to, but if you want. But you'll notice I'm in, I went to the first one on the list, the main one, not my personal one. To go to my personal one, I'd have to click over to it. It'll open another tab and then it'll open my mail which is a little bit annoying, but such is life. But the easiest way to do it is to simply to log out. Now the other way I could have done this, if I go back, so I can go to gmail.com, it'll take it a second and it'll bring it right up. Or I can go to mail.google.com, brings it back up. Or if I'm at any other 
Google app, let's say I'm in my drive, I click on this waffle icon up here, and it'll load up all these different Google apps, and I can just go to Mail. And it'll open it as a new tab so I don't lose what I was doing. So you'll see there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing with Google. They do that so you can pick your favorite, basically, so that you have multiple options.